involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then one star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhijay Takela from IFL Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Rutuja. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and thank you for joining us on the 3QFI22 earnings conference call of Ken Plus Sunmar Limited. It's my pleasure to introduce the company's senior management team who are here with us to discuss the results. We have with us Mr. Ram Kumar Shankar, Managing Director, Mr. N. Murli Dharan, Executive Director of Finance, and Dr. Krishna Kumar Rangachari, Executive Director, Custom Manufactured Chemicals Division. We'll begin the call with opening remarks by the management team, and thereafter we'll open up the call for a Q&A session. I would now like to hand the call over to Mr. Ram Kumar Shankar to take proceedings forward. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Ram Kumar. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody, and I hope that I am audible. On behalf of Kentlar Sanmar Limited and the management team, I extend a very warm welcome to everyone for joining us on our call today. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. Let me start with a quick snapshot of our company, and then we will walk you through the operational and financial performance in the quarter under review. Kentlar Sanmar is a 55-year-old company tracing its heritage back to the 1960s. Our sponsors include two very well-respected names, the Sanmar Group, one of the oldest and most prominent industrial groups in South India, and Fairfax, a well-known international investor. Over the years, Kemplast has carved out a niche in the Indian specialty chemical sector. We are the largest manufacturer of specialty paste PVC resin in India, and via our wholly owned subsidiary, Kemplast Kablur Vinyls Limited, we are the second largest manufacturer of suspension PVC in India. The company is also a leading player in custom manufacturing of starting and intermediate chemicals, catering to multinational innovator companies in agrochemical, pharmaceutical, and fine chemical industries. Further, we hold a significant leadership position in the non-specialty segment like caustic soda, chloromethanes, and hydrogen peroxide, which complete the integration story of the company. We have four manufacturing facilities in the southern region of India, namely in Tamil Nadu and the Union Territory of Puducherry. The company has a very high degree of vertical and horizontal integration with captive facilities to meet feedstock and intermediate requirements. Our integrated facilities position us very well in weathering price volatility across our portfolio of products. Our growth has always been governed by strong environmental health and safety standards. Over the years, we've invested significantly in this area. All our manufacturing sites have zero liquid discharge plants which ensure that all liquid effluent is treated and reused within the process with no discharge outside. The coastal plants at Karekal and Kadalur on the east coast of India also have desalination plants, which ensure that we draw water only from the sea and do not disturb the groundwater table, which enables us to live in harmony with the neighboring communities. Also, we've earned the right to use the Responsible Care logo, which is an international chemical industry initiative granted after very stringent third-party audits. We release annual sustainability reports prepared in accordance with global GRI standards and assured by a big four audit firm. Thirteen such reports have been released till now. With that brief company overview, let me now move on to our performance in the quarter just ended. Q3 has been a very strong quarter financially, with revenues registering a 33% growth year-on-year -year and net profit growing 48% year-on-year. Our CFO, Murli Dharan, will talk about this in detail a bit later. Our specialty chemicals business continued to be strong in the quarter, with base PVC registering a higher realization, resulting in high healthy margins. We commercialized two new products on the custom manufacturing side and started dispatches for these products as well. After reaching all-time highs in October, page PVC prices corrected a bit and are now trading close to US dollar 1,700 to 1,750 per ton. And in the near to medium term horizon, we expect prices to be range bound. With respect to non-specialty chemicals, caustic soda prices peaked during the quarter and still continue to be on the higher side. Currently, it's trading closer to 600 to $650 a ton. The Indian market for chloromethanes reached record highs due to import restrictions. However, with the addition of new capacity in India, 
there has been some correction in prices so even after the correction the prices are still higher than pre pandemic levels once the market absorbs the incremental volume we expect the prices to move up again suspension pvc prices reached a record high in the month of october largely on account of supply side tightness thereafter prices have weakened a bit but continue to remain at healthy levels we expect prices to continue to remain strong as no significant capacity addition is on the anvil in the near term it is noteworthy that feedstock vcm prices have dropped even more than pvc has however the benefit of the drop in pvc vcm prices would kick in after a lag of 30 to 45 days while the impact of the drop in pvc prices would have an immediate impact therefore we expect margins on suspension pvc to improve in a couple of months as the benefit of the vcm price drops start to register sales volume of pace pvc were lower than production largely due to the restriction on operation of downstream units in the national capital region in q3 due to the poor air quality this led to some stock build up which is expected to be liquidated in q4 and the months ahead similarly suspension pvc volumes were also affected to some extent in november and december largely due to the extended rains here too the inventory build up is expected to be liquidated in the near term the one unknown in the quarter ahead is the impact of the omicron variant on operation of industries uh, our end use industries and the demand however given the experience so far this variant seems to have a milder impact and thus the fallout could be milder and more short term looking ahead we are rigorously working on our expansion projects which were mentioned at the time of ipo for a proposed pace pvc expansion of 35000 tons per annum we have received the environmental clearance in fact the clearance has been received for 70000 tons but as of now we are going ahead with 35000 tons per annum expansion as phase 1 once that is complete we will review the next phase this project is well on track and is expected to come up by fy24 near the existing facility of our wholly owned subsidiary kemplas kadlo vinayal limited at kadlo we are leveraging our subsidiary's existing infrastructure including land and the import terminal for this expansion we are also working on expanding our custom manufacturing business with the addition of new multipurpose facilities thereby bringing in new products which are in the pipeline planning detailed engineering and ordering are already in progress for the first phase of expansion given the make or buy economics on ethylene dichloride we have now optimized our production of caustic soda and edc and another aspect of growth which is very imminent is the debottlenecking of our suspension pvc capacity by 10% this is expected to come fully online by the first quarter of fy23 this is a phased debottlenecking part of which is already completed now i would request our cfo murli devan to share the quarterly financial highlights murli yes, thanks rakma uh, good afternoon everyone i hope i am uh, clearly audible uh, looking at the key highlights of kepas performance in uh, q3 and 9 months fy22 kepas and mar on a consolidated basis It is a significant increase in its revenue and operating profits for Q3 FY22 as compared to the same period of the previous financial year. Revenue from operations for Q3 stood at 1452 crores, registering a growth of 33% on year on year basis. This was on account of higher realizations per ton for most of our products, specialty phase PVC, suspension PVC, chloromethane and caustic soda. on the volume front while the non specialty products volume for the quarter was higher sales volume for base pvc and suspension pvc was a quarter was slightly lower on year on year basis primarily due to restrictions around operation of downstream units in the ncr region due to poor air quality and extended monsoons during october to december 21 quarter this resulted in some build up of base pvc and suspension pvc inventory by end december 21 the demand has since picked up strongly and the inventory is expected to get diluted in the near term this quarter saw record prices for some of our key products during october 21 though the input prices also went up the increase in the end product prices more than offset the higher input costs and the margins were quite healthy the end product and input prices have since eased off during november 21 and december 21 with the price of key input vinyl chloride monomer correcting higher than the correction in the end product suspension pvc price going forward with a strong pickup in demand and continuing supply tightness we expect the prices to be reasonably range bound ebitda for the quarter was at 353 crores registering a growth of 25% on year on year basis 
and the EBITDA margin for the quarter was at a healthy level of 24%. Kepler Sunmark prepaid its NCDs in the month of August using IPO proceeds, and our subsidiary CCVL renegotiated its home loan interest from 11.75% to 8.75% in Q2 of FI22. Thus, our finance costs for the quarter came down significantly to 37 crores from 113 crores on year-on-year basis. Driven by higher operating profits and lower interest and finance costs, the PAT grew by 48% to 237 crores compared, compared to 160 crores during the same period in the previous year. Looking at the year-to-date numbers, revenue from operations for the nine months grew by 66% to 4,085 crores as compared to 2,457 crores in the corresponding period last year. And EBITDA for the nine months grew by 67% to 850 crores compared to 511 crores in the nine months FI21. With the higher operating profits and the lower finance costs, net profit for nine months FI22 grew to 417 crores, which is over nine times the PAT of 46 crores in the corresponding period in the previous year. On the balance sheet uh, front, the company continues to be debt-free on a standalone basis. And on a consolidated basis, the net debt is negligible. On the rating front, both Kepler Sunmark and Kepler Karnur Finance Limited have been rated A plus for the long term debt and A1 plus for the short term debt by Crescent. This is actually a two notch increase compared to the earlier ratings of both the companies. The, that uh, concludes our presentation on the uh, Q3 results of Kepler Sunmark, and we would like to open the floor for further discussions now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ahmed from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. First question is that uh, there is some demand impact in Q3 because of erratic monsoon and other reasons. So can you please share the inventory pileup as of December 21 for both suspension and pace PFC? Yeah, sure. Uh, as you rightly said, uh, because of the extended rains uh, in, in most parts of the country, the demand was uh, affected for pipes and therefore for resin as well. Uh, our uh, stock as at the end of uh, December was around 24,000 tons for suspension PVC. And uh, pace PVC stock was around 6,000 tons. This was uh, The demand for this was actually impacted not because of the rains, but more because of the restrictions in the national capital region for uh, uh, on the operations of industrial units because of the poor air quality. And uh, that, since a significant per, uh, proportion of the leather cloth industry is situated in the national capital region, uh, that affected uh, end use demand. So, base PVC uh, stock moved up to 6,000 tons. Okay, sir. And, sir, uh, PVC end user industries have recently filed petition regarding the reduction in the PVC import duty. Uh, for the current budget, and uh, then that may impact the premium domestic players are able to charge related to the import uh, imported PVC. So, how does that impact our profitability? Uh, can you please uh, give some light on that? This is a very uh, you know hypothetical situa uh, situation. You know, so it's um, it's not really. Uh, uh, I don't think we need to spend too much time on that. It is just uh, they have made a request. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen. But I, all, I, all that I would like to say here is this. PVC duties went up from 7.5% to 10% as recently as in 2019. And this was done after a lot of deliberation and discussion and uh, for very valid reasons. Essentially, PVC is a very, very uh, strategic uh, commodity which goes into very important uh, sectors like construction, uh, like agriculture and water conveyancing. And therefore, it is always better not to be over-dependent on imports for such a strategic uh, commodity. Given that, uh, um, the, the government also realized that the factor costs in India were much higher than in comparable countries, and therefore to encourage 
uh, you know, further manufacture of PVC in India, it would be better to give this increase in duty. And this happened just as recently as in 2019. And equally importantly, this 10% is not uh, exorbitantly high. It is quite comparable with the levels of tariffs that are prevailing in various other countries which are comparable to India at the stage of development that we are in. Therefore, we, we are quite confident that there has been absolutely no change since 2019 on this front, and we see no reason why there would be any changes in duties. Okay, sir, makes sense. Uh, thanks for the detailed answer. And there's a second question on the PVC supply demand also. Uh, so I think Adani is also trying to enter PVC industry. They have announced expansion, etc. So how does that impact uh, demand supply domestically? Uh, in Indian market? Uh, that is first question. The second question is, how do we see expanding our uh, suspension PVC capacity uh, and tie up with uh, uh, VCM supply? Okay. Uh, as far as the PVC supply demand in India is concerned, you know, by 2026, uh, the demand is expected to grow to around 4.5 million tons. And with the current capacity of around 1.5 million tons, that would mean a gap of 3 million tons as far as suspension PVC is concerned. So this is a huge gap. Now, any new capacity that comes in is actually welcome because uh, once new capacity comes in, even the downstream producers tend to increase their capacities because they have more confidence of availability of material. So even that 4.5 million tons could go up even more. Given the fact that the per capita consumption of PVC in India is uh, far lower than in uh, the rest of the region. For instance, in India it is around 2.4 to 2.5 kilos, whereas in China it is in excess of 10 kilos, and in other Southeast Asian countries it's anywhere between 4.5 to, uh, to almost 8. So we are uh, way behind, and uh, some supply side security would also uh, give the confidence to downstream producers to uh, uh, expand. So we do not see any uh, uh, impact uh, as it is of any new capacity coming in other than a positive impact. Even the capacity that is announced can come in by only around 2025 or 2026 because it takes that kind of a time to build for a new greenfield plant, unlike a brownfield expansion like ours. So that is uh, on the, um, you know, how, how the market uh, would absorb this additional capacity. As far as our own expenses are, are concerned, I, we are always focused on growth opportunities on various uh, fronts, and we are always looking at that. Our current focus is on growing our specialty uh, chemicals uh, side and increasing the, uh, uh, you know, the, the contribution of specialty chemicals to our overall portfolio. In, in this regard, we have already announced, uh, as, I, as I was also mentioning in my opening remarks, we are already uh, working on the specialty based CVC expansion as also the custom manufactured chemicals expansion. In the suspension PVC, we are doing a small depotternaking which will add 10%, and that will come in quite early uh, within uh, the next uh, three to four months. Uh, having said that, all uh, any future expansions are, are things that would be dependent on, uh, like uh, like you also said, the feedstock tie-up. Th these are all capital intensive. Uh, if we decide to integrate ourselves on the feedstock ourselves, then that would mean uh, far more capital uh, uh, commitment. So that is something that we are uh, we will look at it at the right time. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And sir, second question is on the cash position. So how much cash we have as of December and on the standalone balance sheet and on the CCVL balance sheet? And have we paid any payables uh, in this quarter? Yeah, uh, our uh, total cash position was at uh, 856 crores uh, as at the end of the period. And uh, we have, we have uh, considering the negative carry, we have consciously uh, reduce the payables to some extent this quarter. Can you please quantify? Uh, actually, we uh, 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 paid almost 515 crores, uh, either as upfront payment uh, for purchase of uh, VCM or as prepayment of VCM. Okay, sir. And sir, the second question the dividend policy side. So, uh, in CCVL, we have a negative net worth uh, and we can't distribute cash, I suppose. And for the standalone entity, we have the capex requirement uh, for both Pace PVC and CMC business. So, how that will work, the dividend policy will work in the future? And uh, have we given any thought on the dividend policy so far? No, uh, as you would appreciate, we are just a few months uh, post-listing, 
and uh, I think uh, we, this is something that our board will consider at an appropriate time. I'm sure uh, when the annual results are published at that point in time, the board will consider and take an appropriate decision on the uh, dividend in terms of what is the policy uh, for dividend going forward and what would be the distribution all of those. Okay. And as far as the uh, uh, project funding is concerned, I think Kempla Sanmar has enough uh, cash to take care of the equity portion of the project that needs to be funded. As you know, the total project uh, uh, that's currently being committed is around uh, 650, 700 crores. And uh, uh, Kempla will have enough cash to take care of its uh, commitment towards the project. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Ahmed. May I request you to please rejoin the queue? We have participants waiting for the turn. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, you may rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Akela from IFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for uh, taking my questions. I have a couple. Uh, first one was on the PVC business. So uh, in 3Q, you know, despite a, a significant uh, decline in volumes on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis because of the uh, challenges that you highlighted, the uh, overall EBITDA is, uh, you know, flattish sequentially or even slightly higher, which kind of implies that the margins have expanded quite, uh, you know, significantly uh, sequentially. Um, and in your commentary, you also mentioned that the benefit of the correction in BCM prices will be visible over the next 30 to 45 days. So I just wanted to uh, clarify, should we interpret that commentary to indicate that margins can be even, can improve even further from 3Q levels, or um, how exactly should we think about that? Uh, okay, Abhishek, uh, that was a good question. See, what happened, let me uh, just take a step back and explain what happened in Q3. We reached, uh, uh, you know, record highs of uh, suspension PVC prices in October uh, 2021. And thereafter, uh, once, you know, this was at the peak of the dual controls and all that uh, uh, coal shortages that were there around uh, the region, especially in China. And thereafter, when uh, the Chinese government stepped in and corrected the situation there because of the, uh, you know, coming winter requirements for heating, uh, the availability of PVC did improve. And uh, here again, the demand in India was impacted because of the extended rains. And that together led to prices falling off uh, the highs. So, uh, this uh, drop in prices continued till about mid-January. After that, there has been uh, stability on the prices, and in fact, right now it looks like uh, uh, you know some import quotes that are coming in are actually higher than the earlier round. So it means that the prices seem to be looking up again. Uh, but the point is that we have built up uh, stocks, and uh, those stocks will get uh, liquidated over the next couple of months, and. Uh, from, May, uh, from March onwards, we would start to see the margins again being restored to the, you know, uh, to the high levels that we have seen in the recent past. So this is really where we are. So in the first couple of months of Q4, there could be a little muted margins as far as uh, suspension PVC is concerned. Okay, got it. Um, understood. And uh, the second question I just had was on the custom manufacturing chemicals business. Um, you've talked about the commercialization of two new molecules. So just wondering if there is any further color that uh, it might be possible to share with us on that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, this is Krishna here. Sure. Um, so, yeah, we did commercialize two new molecules. In fact, on one of them, uh, the campaign got over and uh, we actually have a repeat order for the next campaign now. Um, on hand, uh, and uh, the second molecule, you know, we are in the process of uh, uh, making shipment, and that campaign will get done uh, sometime this quarter. And uh, also, the pipeline is very strong. Uh, you know, we have a number of uh, products that we are working on uh, that are at uh, various stages of um, commercialization, and uh, we are making good progress on those as well. Thank you so much, and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Perival from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers. Uh, so, uh, you know, just following up with the earlier question on the pace PVC, uh, on the, you know, PVC margins overall. Uh, while, you know, take your point on, you know, probably moderate margins in the month of January and February and maybe a rebound thereafter. Uh, but do you expect, let's say, even March March onwards, the margins to remain elevated going ahead as well, uh, given the benefits that we will see on the RM and the 
uh, the pricing chart? Uh, I, I didn't quite catch the last point uh, from March onwards. Uh, so on the margins, uh, you know, while take your point that, you know, the significant improvement in margins may be visible from March onwards, wherein the stock liquidation will happen. Uh, but do you expect those margins to sustain at those levels or probably they will also drift down and normalize to maybe an SY22 average number? See, margins are likely to, uh, you know, from March for, okay, let me give you an idea of the extent of, uh, you know, the price uh, delta between PVC and uh, VCI. Uh, you know, in October, the height, the peaks that were reached were uh, PVC of 1900 and VCM of around 1600. So that, that delta was around $300 a ton at that point in time. Now the $1900 of PVC have come off to $1500. Now all these levels are much higher than pre-pandemic levels. So it's, uh, you know, which is, uh, what we expected because of the fact that, uh, uh, you know, global tightness is very much there. So suspension PVC came down to uh, $1,500 levels. VCM is down to $1,100 level. So while the drop in PVC has been uh, from $1,900 to $1,500, which is $400, the drop in VCM is $500. So the margin should kick in, and, and uh, this is uh, where we expect that to be. And obviously, there will be some movement here and there. So it is a question of, uh, uh, you know, it, we can't really predict with absolute certainty where we would be. But all I would say is that it, it, we are quite positive in the direction. Sure. Sure. Okay. That that's uh, helpful. And uh, second question on the CSM side. You know, uh, uh, you did mention some uh, thoughts there on the new product launches and the pipeline there. Uh, if I look at our sort of you know quarterly run rate here on the CSM side, obviously there is a Q1 Q sharp jump there. Uh, if you can quantify maybe the opportunity size of these two molecules and uh, you know the current capacity utilization, whether we have so sort of an you know, adequate capacity to ramp up these products further and maybe capitalize on the newer ones. And a related question to, to to that will be the CSM expansion that we are planning. You know the timelines there. If you can share on that side. So on on the on the two um, uh, new products. Um, that we have commercialized um, with respect to capacity. Um, I mean, as we declared earlier, so we are you know, fairly close to operating at full capacity, but we continue to de bottleneck and uh, you know, squeeze additional capacities out of uh, uh, the existing asset base. And so these two new products, we would be able to continue manufacturing them um, uh, you know, as we as we go along um, in, the, in the future campaign. Uh, but the intent long term is to uh, move some of these as well as uh, the other products that are in the pipeline at various stages, you know, in, uh, they will move into um, uh, the new production block or the multi-purpose blocks, uh, you know, that uh, we are in the process of um, um, building. Um, and so with respect to that, you know, we are on track um, on, in terms of uh, the project uh, related to the new multi-purpose block and, uh, you know, so we will have, you know, better updates as we go along um, in the coming months on that. Uh, sure. So, so if I got you right, uh, the new multi-purpose projects will be uh, probably be coming in FY24. But till then, deep water lacking lead expansion will help us sort of you know drive growth here uh, in the on the revenue side. Will that be right? So the new multi-purpose block is FY23 is a plan. Okay. Um, but uh, but uh, but the second part is right. I mean, we still till that comes along, you know, the both the existing. Uh, I mean, we have growth in our existing products as well. You know, as well as the, the, the ones that are commercialized this year, you know, we will be able to uh, uh, manage those within the existing uh, facilities. Yeah. Sure, sir. And if I may just squeeze in one follow-up on this, uh, the margin profile of these newer products that we are making uh, versus the older one, is there a significant difference or broadly we are on the, on the similar uh, trajectory? I think it's a similar, you know, uh, similar trajectory. Okay, great, sir. That's helpful and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhawal Shah from Swan Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, team. Yeah. Uh, sir, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, to start with, uh, sir, what sort of volume recovery do you see in the fourth quarter uh, for CCVL? Okay. Uh, see, we, we believe that whatever inventory that we built up uh, in, in uh, Q3, 
will be liquidated over the next few months. So uh, uh, demand is already picking up. Uh, if, uh, as you know, the rains have stopped now, and uh, obviously with the entire chain having been destocked, there is very little inventory available in the system. So there, there is a, a pull that is started. Uh, if, if things go exactly as we expect, it could happen over the next three months, we could uh, see all this inventory go off. Okay. So in third quarter, we did roughly 90, 93,000 tons uh, volume. And uh, and you have an inventory of 24,000 uh, tons, uh, the carry forward inventory. So uh, can we can we go anywhere close to the third quarter volumes? Third? Sorry, the second, sorry, the second quarter volume, like second quarter we did 93,000 tons. Yeah, yeah, we should be doing that. We should be, that should be possible. Touching that, perfect. And then now, uh, this 24,000 ton uh, must be at a higher uh, VCM price. And now the VCM prices have fallen. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so then, uh, so, and the, so this, can you tell me what will be the cost of this 24,000 ton uh, inventory which we are carrying? Uh, I don't have that exact number right now with me, but uh, all I can tell you is that that is, uh, 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 okay, uh, all right, I've just pulled it up. Uh, so would you like to go? Yeah, yeah. It is the cost of the uh, inventory is around uh, is at 1 lakh 20,000 rupees per ton. Okay, fine. And the VCM, uh, so the, what will be the, uh, VC, uh, would you be able to share the VCM, uh, uh, like the rate at which, you know, the production cost of this? So VCM is uh, roughly is being carried roughly around $1,380 level. Can you repeat that? $1,380 level. $1,380. Okay. Around that. Okay. And the and the prices which you gave four hundred dollars spread is the is the current uh, uh, spread correct fifteen hundred and eleven hundred that is right that is right that is based on current numbers okay and uh, this spread uh, will be uh, so it will be reflected in the fourth quarter or it will be reflected in the first quarter uh, uh, like like I said this should start kicking in from around March. And uh, maybe the full impact will be in the first quarter. In the first quarter, yeah, the 35, 40 days gap you mentioned. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. And sir, even the pace... Mr. Shah, may I request you to please rejoin the queue? We have sure. participants waiting for their turn. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Raj Kiran Gandhi from SPM Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks a lot for the opportunity. So if you could just highlight on the uh, anti-dumping duty on uh, PVC, uh, which is expiring mid-Feb. So what is the status of that? And uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the uh, anti-dumping uh, duty that we have is on two countries, imports from two countries, which is basically uh, uh, US and China. This ranges from around uh, 2 to 10 percent in the case of the U.S. and 4 to 10 percent in the case of China. Actually, I just converted this into a percentage. Uh, this is uh, uh, actually de uh, denominated in specific dollars per ton, and it refers to uh, given the uh, uh, to the importer risk or the exporter risk. Uh, this is expiring on 13th of February, and uh, we do not expect any great impact because of there's any impact really. Largely because, uh, A, as far as the U.S. is concerned, even now, the FAS Houston prices uh, from, uh, of PVC from the U.S. is already higher than the CFR uh, India prices. And therefore, given that and given the, uh, you know, the time involved in uh, shipping uh, PVC all the way from the U.S. to India, the uh, very high logistics cost, the non-availability of containers, etc. U.S. is really not a threat. In fact, we don't see much uh, uh, material coming in from the U.S. to India. And as far as China is concerned, here again, we do not believe that it is going to be a threat. The way these things normally work is that uh, whenever there is an anti-dumping duty imposed on a specific uh, company, that company normally reduces its price to factor in this anti-dumping duty, and the others on whom there is no anti-dumping duty get the 
benefit as a higher price. Now, when the anti-dumping duty is removed, the general practice is for this company also to raise their price to the same level as the others. They do not leave that money on the table. So we do not think that this will uh, impact the market at all. Okay, okay, sure. And uh, let's see, if I were to see your pricing, as you uh, mentioned, you know, typically, uh, you know, we are, uh, the local prices are at 10 to 15 percent premium to landed across all uh, pet chem products, whereas currently, as we see, you know, from what it seems, you are at a 3, 4 percent discount. So, uh, do you think in, in that sense, even if, you know, globally uh, spreads come off uh, regionally and all, there is a cushion in terms of uh, local pricing premium? Um, See, if you take, uh, for instance, suspension PVC, the normal uh, premium is around $30 a ton over import parity price. And if you look at base PVC, it could be anywhere from $50 to $100 a ton uh, uh, in terms of uh, import parity. But when prices by themselves are very high, at that point in time, the premiums are moderated down. You know, it's, uh, it, it would be a bit uh, too, uh, a little too much to add a premium on top of what is already a very high price level. And these things vary a little bit, but normally they average around these levels. So, okay. yes, uh, okay. you, you would find that uh, that could be some, in, uh, you know, opportunity there. Okay. So, Paletza versus $30 premium, is it fair to say today we are at a discount? Today we are on parity. We are not at a discount. We are on parity. In some markets, we would already definitely be at a premium. Uh, it, it also depends on the geographies that we are selling into. Because, right. uh, you know, uh, if, if uh, the, the prices, the equivalents would be slightly different in the north, in the west, and in the south. Okay. Okay. Sure. And uh, one last question. Uh, any timelines for, uh, since you've got the EC for pace PVC expansion, uh, any clarity on the timelines, if you can share? Yeah, uh, we are uh, uh, sticking, you know, we have uh, said that we would be coming, commissioning this by around October 23, and I think that is, uh, we are well on track for that. Okay, sure, I'll come in queue for further questions. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Gandhi. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv from HDFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you so much. So, just one clarification: the specialty camp, <clears throat> the specialty camp business that we uh, disclose in the presentation, does it include just the PVC, the paste PVC segment, or it includes some others too? Uh, what I'm trying to see, understand is, if I do the revenue and the quantity of uh, specialty chemical to get the realization, will it just be for the paste PVC, or does it include even others? Uh, specialty chemicals includes uh, paste PVC and custom manufactured chemical products. The, oh. These two uh, we, we, we view as specialty chemicals and we track them together. So that is how it is presented as well. Got it, got it. So, okay, so custom manufacturing and this thing. Got it. Perfect, sir. Uh, so the second question was uh, the volume decline in the paste PVC segment uh, or the specialty chemical is about 37 odd percent. Why? Why? Uh, also on a QOQ base, it's lower, and I believe that is largely for the paste PVC. Custom manufacturing is broadly similar. Uh, uh, so this seems a significant decline. So uh, you mentioned about NCR region, uh, but just to get some context here, uh, what would be NCR's percentage of total, you know, India demand for paste PVC? Around you know 60% of the total uh, leather cloth industry is uh, concentrated around that region, and leather cloth by itself is around 75 to 80% of the total demand for paste PVC. So uh, you can you can uh, uh, you know make out the importance of uh, that uh, region. And during the winters, uh, it happened this year that uh, the, there were restrictions on the operations of industrial units in the NCR. And, and that obviously impacted the demand a bit. The one other thing that actually impacted was the, uh, you know, Omicron uh, resulting in schools being shut down again. And, and that would, uh, uh, again, that again had an impact on the footwear demand. Usually the school uh, footwear uh, demand picks up around this time and people start preparing for the school season. And again, when there was a shutdown, so that again had an impact. Uh, but actually now, with all schools reopening around uh, the country, the, we have started to see that footwear demand come back. Uh, and therefore, we believe that this is just a temporary buildup of invention. 
Mm-hmm. Got it, got it. Yeah, so because uh, if I think of the NCR region, it seems even last year and probably it seems a regular event now, every time in winters they have this issue, at least for a couple of weeks. So it seems it's more to do with the footwear thing rather than the uh, than the normal winter issue. It's, uh, it's a l- little bit of both. Uh, this time possibly it was a little more extended than last time. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, But I think that what uh, we possibly need to consider that as some kind of a seasonality going forward, I guess. Mm-hmm. Got it. Perfect, sir. And so the last question is, uh, you mentioned that the paste PVC pricing is about $1,700. Uh, currently, it is settled at that range. And you mentioned the paste PVC is currently at, uh, is about, uh, the suspension PVC is about $1,500. So is the $1,500, the domestic pricing that you mentioned for SPVC and for the paste PVC that you mentioned is the international pricing? Because if I look at the gap between the two, it's about uh, 15 to 16 rupees per kg in kg terms. Uh, and if I look at the historical trend, the paste PVC pricing st- had started to you know reflect some premium to the uh, suspension PVC. I mean, much larger premium versus what it used to trend historically. So I'm just trying to understand the, it's, the gap seems to have narrowed a bit. So uh, is there a difference between the quoted price that you mentioned? No, no, not really. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it's come down to around 1700 to 1725 around that levels right now, and pay a suspension PVC at this level. See, what has happened really is that suspension PVC has really picked up strongly because of the shortage globally. So that it's not that base PVC has actually dropped; it's just that suspension PVC has picked okay. up. So uh, you know, it, it's uh, we are not complaining. Mm, okay, got it. So, but typic- is that right that uh, generally the uh, differential between the SPVC and base PVC was the price realization differential was more than 20, 25 rupees at least in the last two, three years? So, there, probably I'm just trying to understand does it give some scope that the base PVC prices can be uh, further yep. higher than what they are currently? That, that scope is that, like uh, like in uh, suspension, when suspension prices came down, base PVC prices also at the same time when the Chinese uh, situation eased up because of the dual controls, etc. There again, it did come down. See, the one thing that we will need to understand is that a lot, lot of this capacity for both the suspension and paste is concentrated in China. And a lot of that uh, in turn is based on this uh, archaic carbide route, which is cool uh, chemical based. And this is really the area which is under focus right now, both from the point of view of emission control as also from the point of view of the mercury, uh, uh, you know, phase out under the Minamata Convention. So there is uh, that the, the story is yet to play out fully there. What we saw in October and the early part of November was, I guess, just a trailer of what is likely to happen when that uh, crackdown on emissions in China plays out, and and uh, it is still work in progress. Mm, got it, got it. So, so just to confirm, both the pricing that you mentioned, the dollar pricing that you mentioned, or domestic pricing, they're not the international prices. Yes, the this domestic is the CFR India prices. India prices. India prices. They are Sorry. CFR India prices, Guru. So CFR India, after yes. that, you add the duty and then uh, whatever premium you get locally. Mm, got it. Perfect, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Participants are requested to please limit the question to two per participant. The next question is from the line of Bharat Seed from Quest Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. congratulations, Mr. Ram Kumar and Murli Dharan and team. Sir, I have just one question. While on the suspension PVC, we were looking for a feedstock tie-up for which we are waiting for announcing a capacity expansion. Now, if I look at, I mean, um, the, uh, the supply side, I mean, VCM is also having a shortage or EDC is having shortage. And can you give some color on the economics of uh, uh, producing from EDC to suspension PVC and VCM to suspension PVC? Okay. Uh, see, uh, the first question was brought from Bharat Bhai, and uh, thank you for your kind words. As far as uh, EDC and VCM are concerned, um, you know, as you know, EDC is one step, uh, you know, uh, before VCM in terms of the uh, value chain. So from EDC you make VCM, and then from VCM we make the PVC. And uh, if you have to invest in the manufacture of VCM itself, uh, 
it is capital intensive because you will uh, need to set up uh, even based on uh, imported edc and imported uh, imported ethylene uh, if we have that uh, you still will need uh, such significant capex for investing in a vcm production facility so obviously the value addition would be more you would be capture a, a bit more of the value chain but then you would also have to invest a lot more in in that whereas if you are importing vcm and making pvc it is an asset like model like i mentioned in the last call as well correct and as the while our margins would be lower our investment is far far lower so it is a it is a kind of a, a toss up between you know the capital investment and the uh, operating margins so we have chosen to do it uh, through the vcm group uh, largely to uh, you know reduce the time to market and uh, also because that would give us a better return on capital uh, and and that was how we done it uh, and for the last 12 years we've been successful as well in setting up a supply chain that uh, meets our requirements uh, any further investment we would need to then look at how much vcm is available or whether to go through the uh, integrated route itself and that is something that like i said we would take a decision at the appropriate time uh, as far as the pace pvc is concerned incidentally we have 100% of the vcm manufacture in house so there uh, we are fully integrated so sorry i mean how much is that uh, i mean uh, roc difference between if one really look at the spread between uh, going from edc to suspension pvc and vcm to pvc so what kind of roc difference and how much additional for say 1 lakh ton uh, capacity one re- additional uh, capacity is required yeah so today let me give you very very rough uh, rule of uh, you know thumb rule numbers uh, for setting up maybe a 300000 ton uh, uh, pvc plant based on imported vcm which is uh, uh, more or less a brownfield site like ours i'm not talking about a Correct. completely greenfield site which could be much higher a brownfield site like ours which already has a marine terminal the pipeline the vcm storage tank and all that that could cost maybe around 100 to 125 million dollars but an equivalent 300000 ton vcm plant could cost us anywhere between 250 to 300 million dollars so this is uh, again these are all uh, you know um, very uh, rough numbers uh, uh, yeah, uh, which uh, also equally depend on the geography where you are setting it up but uh, that kind of gives you an idea of the difference in capital investment that is required uh, for the integration that you are seeking and today uh, you know uh, uh, edc prices are pretty high at around 850 dollars a ton whereas vcm prices are at 1100 dollars a ton so it it's uh, it you know that advantage is not uh, so much seen for a new plant okay thank you very much and all the best sir uh, thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of yogesh tiwari from marian capital please go ahead thank you sir for taking my question am i audible yes please uh i had two questions uh the first question is uh, if you can uh, please share the pricing scenario for caustic soda uh, currently versus uh, the q3 quarter uh, what would be like if there is a decline what would be the approximate uh, percentage decline and what is the outlook and uh, my next question is uh, the last question is uh, recently the government of india has uh, revoked anti dumping duty on flexi films pvc so just wanted to understand if this is part of your product portfolio and what would be the contribution to sales if it is part of the product portfolio thank you uh, revoke the anti dumping duty on sorry i missed that last part pardon sir i missed that last part revoke the anti dumping duty on on uh, uh, flexi films pvc flex flexi films okay. okay let me take the second question first uh, pvc flex films is not something that we that's one of the products that we the pvc resin that we uh, not such a, a large uh, part of the overall uh, uh, pvc uh, uh, industry in the, in the sense that uh, you know for us more than 78% uh, is uh, comprised of pvc pipes and fittings and then a large part comes to wires and cables and uh, uh, profiles as well uh, so that doesn't directly affect us 
uh, as far as caustic soda is concerned, actually, uh, caustic soda has uh, uh, prices have only been increasing, and uh, in fact, the benefit of these increased prices we will start seeing in Q4. Because the way the industry operates is that roughly around 60% of our sales is based on short term and uh, you know three to six month contracts, and those are all uh, uh, based on the prices, a uh, fixed price contracts. So as and when those contracts that were uh, you know entered into earlier are uh, ended, we will start seeing the benefit of the current prices. So that this is why you would uh, even for uh, other companies who are into caustic soda, you would start seeing that. Uh, benefit on higher prices coming in from uh, you know Q3 and then more so in Q4. So prices will uh, you only start seeing higher prices in Q4. And incidentally, on this uh, anti-dumping uh, duty revocation on PVC film, uh, the Gujarat High Court has actually stayed the order, so it's not yet uh, you know implemented. Uh, was that, uh, did that answer your question? Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, if you can put a, uh, an approximate number, percentage, what would be the increase in caustic soda uh, prices compared to third quarter as of now, approximately, in percentage? Uh, uh, the third quarter prices were somewhere around uh, average, at least what we realized was somewhere around uh, 40,000 levels. Now it is close to 50,000 levels. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for taking the question. Thank you, Yogesh. The next question is from the line of Amanjit Singh from Oculus Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Amanjit Singh, please go ahead with a question. Your line is unmuted. As there is no response, we'll move to the next question, which is from the line of Rajesh Ravi from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, I have two questions. First, on the SPVC, uh, SPVC demand uh, in fourth quarter, uh, we see third quarter volumes have dipped significantly. How has that trend, you know, is being seen in the fourth quarter? And second, uh, do you see any supply influx coming in from China? Uh, in the current quarter, as we understand, one of the uh, one of your competitors said that there could be an increase in supply from China, which could have a downward pressure on the prices. Okay, as far as uh, supply uh, suspension PVC demand in Q4 is concerned, this is we are heading into uh, peak demand season as far as uh, suspension PVC is concerned. And mm -hmm. right now, with all the destocking that happened in Q4 in Q3. Mm -hmm. Uh, very few uh, inventories are being carried right through the channel. So we do expect a good demand pool going forward. And mm -hmm. we do not see any great uh, of, you know, material flooding the market from China. We have not seen anything great. Uh, yes, China is uh, one of the, you know, maybe they, they uh, do around 20% of the total imports coming into India comes from China. But it's not as if there is a veritable flood. Even within China, there is a, a significant uh, demand growth, and uh, uh, we believe that there is pressure on uh, operations of existing mm -hmm. plants with the Winter Olympics and uh, various other, you know, the decarbonization, etc. So we do not see that as a threat. Okay, great. And uh, following up on the same, uh, in January, so this demand traction is already visible in numbers, in your numbers in terms of YOI or sequentially. Uh, in the second half of January, yes. Like I said, the drop in prices uh, went till the middle of January. After that, it has stabilized. And now okay. it is uh, looking like uh, some import ports have already started coming in higher. So that itself is, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just uh, an evidence of uh, the market demand uh, getting stronger. Okay. So net net, you're expecting that the resin price download momentum, which we have seen in last two months or one and a half, two months, that is nearly bottomed out and demand also should pick up. So that would also lead to better channel uh, stocking. Exactly. That, that, okay. That's our expectation. Okay. Great, sir. Thank you. All the rest. Thank you, Rajesh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from MK Global. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so just one question. Uh, in Q3 uh, for suspension PVC, uh, what was the operating rate? And because of the increased inventory levels uh, in Q4, uh, will the operating rate uh, remain at same levels or are we planning to curb the operating rate? Thank you. So we never uh, curb, uh, you know, operating rates for uh, demand purposes because we are, uh, you know, we know that this uh, whatever uh, inventory buildup is happening or the weakness in demand that we see is very temporary. So uh, curbing operating rate would mean a permanent loss of uh, volume, which is something that we never uh, do. So we uh, do not see that uh, happening. We will be producing, and uh, we are quite confident that uh, this is uh, just a temporary inventory buildup. Usual, see, and even now, if you look at it, when we say inventory buildup, it's uh, it's still a one month inventory buildup, a little less than one month, uh, because we are used to having inventory of only around four days, five days, or six days. We we see one uh, less than one month as something big. But in many industries, a uh, one-month working capital inventory is possibly the norm. But uh, we do not believe that uh, this, uh, you know, we are we are not under any pressure to cut cut back on operations. Right, sir. Got it. Uh, thanks a lot, Investor Club, sir. And, and in February, in early February, there is a, a, sh a shutdown that we are anyway taking, which is an annual shutdown that we take, in, during which we'll also be lining up some of the pre-bottlenecking uh, equipment, uh, whatever is. Uh, being uh, put in. So that will anyway be there. And uh, for how many days uh, will this shutdown last for? That will be around 20 days. That is a normal annual phenomenon. Correct. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshik Shah from Nirvana Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thanks and uh, congratulations for the great set of numbers. So that's just one question. So given what you're saying is the pricing trend for almost all the product categories which we are into is going to stay firm. What kind of uh, kind of data margin should we kind of uh, run with in short to medium term for our company? Uh, we have achieved an EBITDA margin of uh, 20% for the quarter and year as a whole it is around 21%. I think last year also was close to that. Uh, we we would refrain from giving any specific guidance going forward. I think uh, uh, the somewhere between these two levels would be a reasonable level to assume going forward. Also. But I would uh, I, we wouldn't we would like to refrain from giving any specific number. Sure, no issues. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Dasha. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aegis Lakhani from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, gentlemen, thanks. Uh, my first question is, uh, you know, I'd like to learn about uh, the current size of the custom manufacturing, uh, you know, gross loss. Or if you could just tell us a little bit more about what is that specific uh, asset block. Uh, on the uh, asset block, uh, we are uh, on the gross block, current uh, gross block is around 80 crores. 80 crores, okay. And how should be how how will it progress? Uh, does this include the de bottlenecking? Yeah, de bottlenecking is a, a marginal capex that we will incur, but the large capex is in terms of the projects that we are incurring. Like we had committed in the IPO, we have already started progressing on that. We have. Uh, so we are looking at an investment of around 340-350 crores over the next three years period. Okay, okay. And uh, I just wanted to understand also that in terms of uh, total number of products commercialized till date, uh, could you give us some more color on that? And uh, is this some, uh, you know, have we tied up with the innovators or are we still in the pilot stage there? No, we've been working with innovators uh, for a long time and uh, uh, we continue to sort of uh, enlarge the customer base. And of course, in terms of the uh, number of products and the details, uh, we would like to refrain uh, from giving the details for competitive reason. Hope you would uh, appreciate. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For and it's, it's, it's only strengthening. Okay, got it. And sir, uh, you know, the, the, the power and fuel cost, you know, uh, are we looking for any alternative sources other than coal today? Okay, uh, so as far as our uh, subsidy, see, today coal accounts for around 40% of our total power mix. Uh, 
and and uh, we also have a, uh, uh, some portion coming in through gas uh, and some portion is through the grid. So we buy okay. the grid power. In our subsidiary uh, company, Templar Cardinal Vinyls Limited, we are looking at, uh, we are working with somebody on a group capital power project on the solar front, which could account for 25% of the CCVL requirement. So we are constantly looking at this. We also have some windmills on in our own uh, uh, side, but those are not too significant. Uh, but yes, we are looking at uh, means where we can reduce the proportion of coal in the overall mix. Okay, and and so this uh, the mention of solar, uh, you factored that in in your capex guidance when you have given them out, or or this is the incremental capex that you are looking at, and by when do you think it will get commercialized if at all you pursue the solar project? Okay, this is a group capital power project, so it's not like we are setting it up. It is okay. being set up by uh, somebody else, and uh, you know we would only be subscribing to it in that sense. So Got this it. is something that we are working with them on, and uh, hopefully before the end of uh, the come, you know, the next financial year, we should have some uh, uh, news to share on that. Okay. Got it. Thanks, Adan. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and in closing, uh, I would like to mention that the demand outlook for both base PVC and suspension PVC continues to be strong due to the significant deficit worldwide and especially in the region. And the high import uh, dependence in the domestic market and the global tightness augur well for domestic manufacturers like us. With our dominant position in the Indian market and the expansion plans to cater to the growing demand, we believe that we are well placed to benefit from the uptake in the chlorovinyl sectors, including PVC, uh, both suspension and specialty paste and caustic soda. The custom manufactured chemicals pipeline is also strong and the prospects are encouraging. And the strength of the balance sheet, especially post the IPO, puts us in a strong position to take advantage of the various growth opportunities. With this, I conclude the call, and if you have any further queries, please do contact FGA, our uh, Investor Relations Advisor. And thank you once again for joining us today on this earnings call, and please do stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of IFL Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.